my opera set design career uh, ended really at, uh, at Lincoln Center, both at New York City Opera and at Juilliard. New York City Opera uh, the, of the, the, the days of Beverly Sills and Christopher Keene and Frank Cassaro, all at New York City Opera, came to a close because they, they had financial problems and there's no longer New York City Opera. Frank Cassaro asked me to be part of uh, Juilliard. He became the uh, director of the opera program. And I did several productions in the last years, although I was teaching at the University of North Carolina School of the Arts, which had an opera program uh, and a film program. But I, I taught uh, painting and drawing, uh, model building and set design and somewhat, sometimes costume design uh, for the University of the, of the Arts in Winston-Salem. But I would come to New York and do the operas at, Ju at Juilliard, and Juilliard gave me an apartment. <coughs> I would stay there for a while. But I was in my 60s, and um, Cassaro and I were doing the operas. We did one or two more productions on the West Coast. We did, we did uh, uh, the Los Angeles opera, and we, we, went to, um, we went to Santa Barbara, Marilyn Horn, uh, had a, a, a master's program uh, for voice. Uh, it was a, uh, it had a, a name, I've forgotten the name of the institute. There was an institute, Marilyn was the head, there was a staff and they taught voice. Uh, it, was quite, it was quite well known. And we did, a, we did an opera there, but we took the production from Juilliard, rebuilt it and repainted it in Santa Barbara. Um, uh, these were the days uh, when Frank was the head of the program at Juilliard and we did a few, a few uh, um, world premieres uh, by, uh, um, by composers. We did Stephen Paulus production, he's a well-known composer. Um, we did a spectacular version of, what is the opera with the nuns? It's hanging on my wall to my right behind. You can take a picture of it. Um, and one after one lunchtime, uh, it was we're at Juilliard, and we came out of the stage door of Juilliard. We went down the steps, and we crossed over into the plaza where the fountain is, the Met, uh, the Avery Fisher Hall, and the other theatre. And we got to the. We got to the, um, Frank was talking about future productions, and we got to the fountain and I said, I said to Frank, uh, I can't do this anymore. I don't, I just had enough. I want to paint. I would love to just paint every day. And, um, and I remember we, we, we walked across to Fiorello's for lunch. Uh, there were two or three more productions that I did do for him, uh, for Juilliard. And I remember going back to um, uh, back to uh, North Carolina, t t uh, the final two years, and I went to the dean. I said, um, uh, Joe Tilford, who was the dean. I said, Joe, um, uh, I, I don't want to teach anymore. You know, I'm getting on now. You know, I mean, I I that was I was probably seventy when when. Uh, these occurrences happened, 69 maybe. And um, Raber had found uh, uh, the loft for me on Westminster Street in, in Providence. And I just remember uh, Raber came down uh, and we, we, you know, we had a, a that's a truck, I loaded it up. And I, I left, I left, I, I left uh, at 72. Uh, and they made me an emeritus professor. So I think to get, they were pleased to get rid of me. They gave me a, a title, right? Uh, so I came and I came to Providence, where indeed I started to begin painting again. And uh, I've been here 13 years, and I, I do attempt to do some drawing and some ink work in my 
watercolor room, but I spent a lot of time right here at this wall uh, painting large canvases.